Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to our May 24th Sunday service brought to you by St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Duncan and St. Columba Presbyterian Church in uh, Parksville on the beautiful Vancouver Island. We welcome all of our online worshipers this morning. Our call to worship is found in Psalm 47, first two verses. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. Let us pray, our friends. Gracious and loving God, we gather together as your people, seeking to be filled with your Holy Spirit so that we will begin a new week set apart to do your will, to be kingdom makers in the world that you have set us to live. So we gather together to worship you. Receive our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of our life spent with As you come to him, the living stone, 
rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices, accepting God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Matthew 6 verses 10 Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hello to St. Andrews in Duncan and St. Columba in Parksville. It is my delight to be bringing the sermon to you this week to both of our communities. St. Andrews, I miss you all and eagerly anticipate the day that we can wisely worship together again in spirit and truth. St. Columba, although I have not met you, I feel in this season that we are graced to worship together and be in unity together. Your pastor, John, speaks highly and fondly of you. He helps us to feel the joy of all of us being together in spirit. Before I continue, I must apologize that the longer passage of scripture read today will likely sound very familiar to us, as John preached a sermon from it only a few weeks ago. You see, what I began to work on for this week was born out of my processes and responses to our current circumstances, and the situational nature of this sermon had me already considered considering principles that reside in these texts before I realized that they had already been read and taught on recently. Hopefully we can appreciate that God's word is such that we can return to passages over and over again and always glean something new and something presently impacting. I trust and pray that you are all doing well despite the unique and challenging circumstances we find ourselves in. If you are anything like me, the past two months have been incredibly turbulent. Our lives have been disrupted, routines, systems, and what we expect to be normal. All of that seems to have changed in the blink of an eye and has left us in many ways bewildered and scrambling to adjust to a new normal. I think that many of us feel on a practical level that we have adjusted to life as it is now, or at least we've stopped resisting the fact that things aren't going to be the way they were for quite some time. I certainly feel that way. As I reflected on the past several weeks, I realized that the struggles I went through weren't only practical, mental, and emotional adjustments that were needed, but also spiritual. At many points, it was apparent what to be praying for, what to turn to God for, and what to rely on Him and expect from Him. But there were also countless occasions where media articles had me confused, uncertain and anxious, or circumstances right in front of me had me confounded and lacking the seemingly quick thinking needed to adjust on the fly. I found over the weeks that whenever I was unsure of how to speak, pray, respond, or act, the same phrase kept coming up, filling in the blank spaces and unknown places. That phrase was, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This became my go-to prayer when I had nothing, knew nothing, when I was insecure and unconfident, when what seemed in front of me was unconquerable, I would turn to a plea that God's kingdom continues to grow and expand on earth, even if I didn't know what that looked like. This phrase in many ways began to bring much needed comfort. 
certainty and assurance as I face problems and situations I had no familiarity with. And, unsurprisingly, it brought the subject of God's kingdom, especially here on earth, to mind much more often. It caused me to consider what, it lo what that looked like in deeper and wider ways. As I pondered and read sources on it, everything began to focus onto a point that to me in one way was simple and in another way immensely challenging. This, that point was this, God's kingdom is meant to be on earth. Not just in heaven, but on earth. As I said, in one way, this sounds so simple, like of course we know it. But equally, it challenges us because in many ways, we've taken the habit to read God's word and allow the passages we find there to inform us and stoke our hope for the future, our final destination. We read the scriptures and we use them to look forward in time and space. And then we look at our here and now and consider how our actions might at worst earn our place in that future, or in a lesser way, assure us that that long-awaited future is coming. But the truth is, the first century Jews, Paul, and the early Christians understood and wrote with the understanding that God's story of Israel and the nations was not that they would eventually get whisked away to a paradise in the sky but that he would build his kingdom amongst them in real time. The Jews anticipated the Messiah with the expectation that their real world, real time circumstances would be affected by his coming. While they were wrong about the Messiah, <clears throat> they were not wrong about the real world implications that he would bring. When Jesus and John the Baptist proclaimed the kingdom of heaven is near, they meant it was here among those they were speaking to. When Paul traveled the Roman Empire, he nearly almost went first to the synagogues in the, in the cities to proclaim that God's story had come to fulfillment in the person Jesus, so or more so that the fulfillment of God's story started in him and was meant to be walked out in an immediate manner from that point. So instead of adopting a set of behaviors and beliefs that would one day usher them into, the, into a future of blessing and salvation, the idea was that Jesus, he, in Jesus, here is the kingdom of God. And that it's time to start living as citizens of that kingdom, not once we get to heaven, but here and now until the ultimate fulfillment of that kingdom arrives. So if we can see that God's kingdom is meant to be here on earth among us and growing as time progresses, what does that look like? Well, the important thing is to look at what God is that oh, sorry, the important thing to look at is that God is the one building his kingdom. And as we look into our passage today now, we see rich language used to describe what he is building. He is building a temple to house his glory and his presence here on earth. And that building is made of a very special material, living stones. And what are the living stones? We are. If you doubt, then you only need to read further to see that Peter embellishes this idea by calling the followers of Christ a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. If those words do not describe a kingdom being built right before our eyes, I don't know what does. The succinct answer to the question, what is the kingdom of God? You are. You are a living stone. You are an essential part of what God is doing on earth. Not in the future, not somewhere else, here and now. You are the kingdom of God. What a beautiful assurance and what an immense exhilarating challenge that is set before us in these words. It can be awkward to consider the idea that being built together in God's kingdom <clears throat> while we are compelled to be apart. But this time, no matter how long it lasts, is temporary. I think that it can be considered as an opportunity to us. 
as we have all had to pause and pull away from the habits, the systems, and the routines that have sustained us and moved us through life, we can use this time to reflect and to be inspired to move into new spaces. Because right now, those spaces exist. We can consider in deep and honest ways what, is, what it means to be a living stone, a building block for God's kingdom. We can explore what is unique in each one of us individually as a living stone, but also what is common with the other living stones around us that we are to be vitally connected to. As we gain knowledge, we can compare that knowledge to what was and consider if we need to change what was to reflect what we now understand better. As we look toward being back together in the world, <clears throat> and in the world, sorry, we can observe what has changed in our absence and consider what of that change is for the better and could be improved upon. What if we got back together? What if when we had got back together, we had all connected with God in deeper ways and bring that passion, energy, and creativity into our corporate gatherings? What if the necessity of engaging in new ways of community was just the beginning of the juices of innovation flowing, and that our worship gatherings made room for that creativity and hunger rather than just returning to the way things were? What if, when we got back together, our separation from one another stimulated a hunger for connectedness, realization that in spite of people's flaws, they are treasures and we re-engage with the joy that no matter <clears throat> that of knowing that no matter who is in front of us, they are a living stone and a thing of beauty in what God is building here on earth. What if our time spent more alone led us to embrace the love of the Savior in a way that allowed no more room for shame, guilt, condemnation, only acceptance and love? What if we led off on that foot as we regarded ourselves and those around us? What if we looked around and realized that we are surrounded by a creation that God has said is good and that it is on us to make sure that it remains good? What if we saw the beauty of creation and some of the beauty that is returning as we are absent and saw that as part of God's kingdom as it screams praise and glory more loudly and more pleasantly than most of us can sing? What if we realized the efforts that we as individuals, groups, and societies put into stopping the rampage of this virus could be applied to other solvable societal problems? What if we looked at what we could do to affect basic food, water, and shelter needs across the globe in the same light of urgency and perhaps see even more deaths prevented and more lives improved for the better. I don't know where to stop. Perhaps I'm an idealist, but as I see it, we currently have the privilege of time and space to reflect on these things. That might not always be there. I pray that we all take brave looks inward and around us to see what we can do to come out of this having grown and increased in our preparedness to be a part of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father, in many ways we seem so quickly aware of the difficulties in this time. But this morning we want to focus on the opportunities that come within this time knowing that you are never resting from building your kingdom here on earth. As we're spending time apart and preparing to begin coming back together, use this time in us, individually and corporately, to gain a fuller understanding of what it means to be a living stone in what you are building. And as we come back together, help that stone that we have allowed you to shape in us become something beautiful and powerful that connects with everything else to bring your glorious kingdom here on earth. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful week. Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, 
We come to worship you as creator of the universe in all its glory. We come to praise you for the gift of your saving grace through Jesus, your son. We come to thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us in our daily walk. We humbly ask your blessing on our lives, our families and friends, and our communities. Guide and direct, we pray, the leaders of our churches, our province and our country, that their decisions may be thoughtful and wise. Come, Lord, rid the world of the coronavirus and bring peace and safety to our homes again. We uphold in prayer all of those who are ill in health, those who are struggling financially, and those who have lost all hope. Restore and sustain us, Lord, that we may see your light in the dark places. Remind us of your promises, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And in the words that Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We begin a new week, seeking to bring glory and honor to God, to be God's kingdom builders, through what we say, through what we do, and through what we think. So as we begin a new week, seeking to bring pleasure to God, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the indwelling inspiration of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Have a wonderful week, folks. became